Hello, I am Bear, and you are here to finish up the coolest shower remodel you'll ever do. Part 1 got the studs in the walls, part 2 got the plumbing in the wall, and part 3 got the wall on the wall. And now, part 4 will get the doors on the wall. We'll also see how we fully finish up this remodel with plumbing trim and other little teeny bits. To start, we'll get our plumbing trim on, so that that's out of the way. We got this nice matching mowing trim here, and it even comes with a tub spout, which will do nicely in the trash for us. To get started, let's pull out the shower neck that holds the shower head in place. To install this correctly, the longer part of this will be the horizontal part that we screw into the wall. It comes with an escutcheon, or a wall plate as well, which will hopefully cover up your not too large hole that you made in the wall. We'll slip that on like so before moving forward. Now if you recall from part two, we used Teflon tape and pipe dope to screw on the female brass adapters. We're gonna do the same thing here with the shower neck. Make sure you're applying that tape clockwise as you wrap it around the threading a few times. You won't be able to easily see a leak at this joint because the wall is closed up. So you wanna make sure you get it on the best you can the first time. Finish off this uh, joint by applying a healthy amount of dope, also known as thread sealant. You'll stick it into the wing L fitting that you put at the top of the shower and start to rotate it to the right to screw it in. Once you realize it's not cross threaded and it goes in nicely, use the handle part of the pair of pliers that you've got to turn it tighter. This works by sticking the handle of the pliers into the actual hole of the shower neck and then turning it that way. When it feels quite firm and lines up pointing downwards, that should be sufficient. It's nice to try and not apply too much pipe dope and or Teflon tape to the side where the shower head screws onto. Keeping it minimal makes it look cleaner. After you screw it on and test it out, you can see then if it holds water or if it's going to leak at that joint. If it does leak, then you can remove it and apply more. Try not to use pliers with teeth on this as you could scratch the surface while you tighten it up, ruining the finish of your shower head. Use a wrench instead if needed. Now we can move on to our shower trim. You'll have the cover plate and two machine screws to put in. We made sure to have a hole large enough to accompany those screws. Now it should be fairly obvious how to put on this cover plate. After this simply start screwing in the screws. Make sure you tighten both screws evenly until the plate metal cover is touching the finished wall surface. Next, grab the plastic parts that go under the shower control handle and install them, like so. One thing I like about the shower controls is that they're usually more user-friendly than one would expect. Your worst enemy is trying to move too fast and then accidentally dropping a screw down the drain. Don't be a moron! Pace yourself. Now take this screw and screw it in horizontally to the front of the plastic pieces you just installed. Lastly, we'll install the actual handle with the Allen screw on the bottom. You'll install the handle pointing down and the screw itself will be applied on the bottom side of it as well. When it's all said and done, remove your protective plastic and do a detailed cleaning of the area. Also, be smart, take off your shoes from here on out when you're walking onto your shower base. Hot dog! Let's get onto that shower door. We want to get this just right, so pay good attention and please like this video and subscribe to Hello I Am Bear for more useful, fun videos like this. I'm kind of curious what kind of RV that you have. Can you let us know below in the comments? Okay, so first we have the wall profiles, quote unquote. We need to screw these into the wall so that we can attach the quote unquote shower doors, quote unquote. Offhand, I don't recall the measurement, but if you look into the instructions, It'll tell you something like 34 and a half inches or 35 inches off of the finished corner wall. So in marking the walls for where your wall profile is going to be attached, it's good common practice to apply painter's tape to the finished surface to mark. That way, you don't need to worry about erasing pencil marks from the tile afterwards. You can either mark the tape or use the side of the tape itself as the mark. Once you have your mark for where the wall profile lines up, use a level to run your marks up the wall. Of course, you'll be doing this on both sides of the shower. Next, we'll actually put up the wall profile pieces. 
lining them up with our marks on the tape. Mark the holes that the screws will go through and then pre-drill at least through the PVC tile. You don't need to pre-drill too deep though since if you recall, we have some nice old 2x4s in the wall now. Before attaching the wall profile, slip some silicone into those holes you just drilled and then apply the silicone to the back of the wall profile like so. Drop the wall profile in place and screw it in. Don't screw it in over the blue tape though. Make sure to remove that tape first if it's going to get it pinched behind it. Now I'm telling you, because we did the steps in part one of this video series, you will have no doubt in the strength of these pieces that you're installing. Next, we need to piece our door profiles, quote unquote, together. These are the stationary pieces of the door that the sliding door is attached to. There is a corner piece, as you can see here, which will overlap the two door profiles. Slip it on over the end piece here and install the appropriate screw to hold it in place. This may require a little pre-drilling, but don't use a drill bit that's wider than your screw. Now this is the bottom of the door profile. You're going to have to do the same at the top of it as well, installing another corner piece. It may be a good idea to get a second hand for this part. And it doesn't hurt when the second hand is good looking too. Take the two door profile pieces and set them up near the actual shower. Put them together like so, with that corner piece connecting them. Then apply two more screws to the other side of that corner piece, just like you did with the first. If you measured everything correctly, it should slip right in with a little flexibility to the wall profile pieces. At this point, looks of wonder and awe may emerge from bystanders. Next, we have rollers for the slider doors and screws. You may have to prop the slider doors on your feet or on some shims to prop them up a bit while you install it to the top track. There's going to be some obvious spots in the top track for you to attach these rollers to. You may find that the screws don't want to tighten up as you screw them into the rollers. If that's the case, then apply light pressure to the slider door, pulling it out or pushing it in, you know, just slightly. Doing so will hold the roller in place so that you can apply the screw. After the two rollers are attached on the top, you can do the same on the bottom. These two sliders are going to have a magnetic strip on the one side that are supposed to meet together at the outside corner of the shower. Keeping that in mind will let you know which door goes on which side. Now we just need to make sure that the door profiles are attached to the wall profiles. You're given several screws to pre-drill and install on each side according to the instructions. They also receive these white plastic washers which serve as spots to attach the black cover over them for that nice finished look. The last part of it all is siliconing every seam that we have where water could escape. For this setup, I would use white silicone on the walls in the corner and where it meets the ceiling. Anywhere you have a black surface meeting a white surface, I would suggest using clear silicone. Make clean lines of silicone moving slowly with it. Because honestly, no matter how cool your shower is, if your siliconing looks like junk, your shower will look like junk. So have some pride. And don't forget to silicone the outside of the seams of your wall and door profiles as well. Naturally, don't accidentally silicone your slider doors to your door profile, because that would be pretty dumb. Boy, whew, this was a long journey we took together. And I think you learned a little too much about me along the way. In fact, oh, I'm so tired, I'm not even going to do a happy dance right now. I'm just going to go to sleep. Hey, YouTuber! Did you enjoy this video? Well, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below! Check! And if you're feeling especially giving, make sure to share it with a friend! Leave a comment below and subscribe! Check! 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 And lastly, make sure to mail a check for $1,000 to 106 A Broadway, Huntsville, Louisiana, 46582. Huh? Shh, wait, let's see if they do it.